A 33-year-old boxer from Pukepoto in Kaitaia and mother of five, Mia the Nightmare Mutu, claimed the IBO Super Bantamweight World title last week, defeating Canada's Tanya Walters at the Fight for Life charity boxing event in Tamaki last Thursday. Mutu is a four-division New Zealand boxing champion, holding more titles than any other female boxer, breaking the record set by another Māori boxing superstar, Daniela Smith. Mia Motu, no Te Rarua, is with us now in the studio. Tēnā koe, Mia. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And congratulations on <laughs> Thursday's victory. How, how are you feeling? Has it really sunk in yet? Not really, no. It's, it's still, I'm still pinching myself and I'm still like just waking up as a mother, but still realising that I've won a world title, so have to keep reminding myself. You, you said that the emotions were kind of difficult to control, primarily because of the Fano support and the haka beforehand. How were you able to get that under control? As soon as I walked in the ring, like as soon as I hop in that ring, I switch, I just change straight away and I become the nightmare. And that's what it is, right? It's just that, that, that little switch yeah. because some people can be overawed, overwhelmed. In yeah. that similar situation, especially with family and especially with your children around. Yeah, especially with my children. Like, my children are my biggest inspiration and they make me the most emotional, but they also give me that determination. Yeah. And you've had to go through a lot of that determination, particularly with your tamariki. You've gone on a journey. Yes. Uh, some of it involved domestic violence. Yeah. How were you able to extricate yourself from that environment? It took, it took years, it took a lot of learning and fighting. I was fighting a battle in myself through mental health as well. So just watching and observing a lot of people and what they had to go through yeah. and trying to flick and teach myself those values as well. And just knowing that where I was brought up and how I was brought up, that's what kept me together. Like my, like my grandparents and where I'm from and when I was born as a kid and where I got that strength, how I used to take on my cousins mm. and my aunties and not be afraid. Yeah. So that's what held me together and kept me going as well. And what kind of advice would you give to others who have been on a similar journey through uh, domestic violence, having children, tamariki, what would you advise to, to those who have been through going through a similar situation? The number one thing for me, like definitely I would give advice is don't be ashamed and use your voice because if we don't use our voice, then we hide under that abuser. So, you know, if we stay silent, we're letting that abuser win because we're not speaking. So we need to speak and you need to be able to use your voice and don't be afraid. That's the biggest because I was always ashamed, yeah. and I lived in, I lived under that shame. And did you feel it was your fault? Yes, I felt it was my fault, but it wasn't. And I constantly, for years, battled that shame, and I overcame it by realizing that why do I live under this abuser by mm. staying silent? I need to speak. It's okay to speak. Don't be afraid to speak. And when you came to that determination which I, it's not an overnight thing, is it? No. When you came to that determination, your whole life seemed to change. You next met up with what I consider one of the best boxing gyms in the country, Peach Boxing. Yes. Uh, and from there, how did that go? Why did you step into, in, into that environment? I stepped into that environment because I needed to do a change. I needed to be stronger for myself and I needed to do something for me and not for everybody else. So I took that leap of faith and I built, I built a relationship with these people and especially my coach and his wife. They were like the two strongest people. They taught me how I should live, mm -hmm. how I should be, and they protected me and sheltered me. And now I am where I am, you know? They've given me a whole different power. They've told me that, no, life shouldn't be like this. Life should be great, you should be enjoying it. And see, that's one of the incredible things. The best coaches in the world are those that can embrace yeah. that whole bringing you in. They accept and, me for me. Right. That's the biggest thing. They allow me, like my coach always says, don't change for nobody. You be who you want to be. If this is what you want to be, go and be it. Yeah. And he pushes us to do that. And he'll do everything possible to make sure that we succeed our dreams. That's the best thing about him. He won't give up. No. 
So if he doesn't give up, then yeah, it gives up. us more determination and more hunger to go for it. And what do you, what do you coach Isaac and you got planned for your next, next challenge? Me and Isaac and Alina, his wife, uh, and Boaz, we definitely, we want to take on the world. We ain't stopping. They know how determined I want this. And all three of them back me 100%. Yeah. yeah, and they know. So our plan is to fight in July, hopefully, fingers crossed, if Dean can make it happen with DNL. So I'm hoping that we can get that happening here in New Zealand because the world hasn't seen how great New Zealand is. Yeah, yeah. And I would love it to be back here because I want the world to see how beautiful our country is yeah. and also how beautiful our culture is. And we want to see you here. Yeah. In, anyone and in mind? Any oh, fighters anyone. in mind? Anyone. No, there's all of them. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just want anyone and I'll take on anyone because I want to fight the best. Yeah. If I want to be the best, I have to fight the best. And that's all I want. And I just want to keep growing to be a great fighter. Who do you see as some of the best at the moment? I see Sugar Neeks. I see um, a Venezuelan lady, um, Ali Scottney, who's in the UK. Mm. So they're all in the top five in the division. So those are the girls that I'd love to take on yeah. because they're the best in my division. And... The ones up is Katie Taylor and um, Amanda Serrano, who's like a beast. So she's yeah. she's definitely the best in, in the world and would love to fight them. Well, look, you're an inspiration. You just are in the journey that you're on. We really appreciate you coming and spending time with us today and talking through part of that journey. It's amazing. You're amazing. We need sponsors, of course. You need yeah, that to, to keep going. Um, yeah, because we need the sponsors to help also, like to back us here in New Zealand because it's really hard to get the expense just to bring a fight over here to pay the sanction fees. It costs a lot of money and then to pay for the fighters alone. That's why we have to go overseas yep. because they've got the money and they've got the backing. We're here in New Zealand. They don't really back it. Yep. Yeah. Well, we've got to get that for you anyway. You're yeah. amazing. And of course, not everyone can become a boxer when they've gone through the journey you've been through. You're actually amazing in the ring. So <laughs> thank you so much for joining us today. Thank and you. Congratulations again. Thank you.